Day one coverage from Cary, North Carolina continues here at the Division II Baseball National Championship. Lincoln Rose, Joe Castellano welcoming you back. It is our second game of the day, our nightcap. As the two seed Sea Lions of Point Loma take on the seven seed Prairie Stars of UIS. Point Loma out of San Diego from the Pac West Conference, while UIS, Illinois Springfield. Out of, of course, Illinois from the GLVC, Great Lakes Valley Conference. Great to have you with us. Asher Brad leads things off to face Baxter Halligan on the mound as the Southpaw delivers the first pitch of the ball game and off the mark. Joe, we just saw a complete game pitch from both pitchers from our earlier contest between Southern Arkansas and Rollins. You can imagine how that will benefit both teams moving forward throughout the week. It would be Southern Arkansas prevailing 3-1. The winner of this game will face Southern Arkansas in 48 hours on Monday in a, or pardon me, on Tuesday in a winner's bracket contest while the loser will face elimination against Rollins on Monday. We could be in store for another high scoring game at some point later in this tournament, but it looks like early in the tournament, we're in for some really good pitching because you've got aces here with Baxter Halligan 12 and two and Colton Hale 12 and one. Here's the two one to Brad. Asher Brad, all region, first team all conference, the sophomore. Hitting 382 on the year with 40 RBI, three home runs. Halligan, first team All-American as confirmed this week. The senior was your Division II Pitcher of the Year. That super regional win for Baxter Halligan and his teammates this past weekend also happened to be his birthday. Uh, right now, Asher Brad with a 2-2 count to his name. Probably reaches out of the strike zone for that one to keep it 2-2. Brandon Bannon on deck, Zion Pettigrew in the hole. Your middle third of the order for UIS, Alderman, Youngquist, and Bannerman. Deacon Silas, Phelps, and Bernard, your 7-8-9 hitters. Another look here for the Prairie Stars. Both teams sitting on 48 wins this year. That one pulled foul. Count stays at two and two. Halligan is a two-way player, so he's not only going to be on the mound pitching, he's also in the lineup as a hitter, as the number three hitter in the lineup. He's had an impact on every game, whether he's on the mound or not. Seventh pitch of this at bat. And Asher Brad will see an eighth, and this is all you can ask for from your leadoff hitter, even if Brad does not get on. His teammates are getting a decent look at Baxter Halligan. You see his teammates on the front step of the dugout down the first baseline. Payoff pitch to Asher Brad. And he's earned himself a base hit to get things started. What a fantastic job by Brad. What it really was to have an at bat like that to start out with six pitches and then knock one right back up the middle. That's what you'd love to see from your leadoff hitter. He knew he was going to get a strike here. You don't want to walk the leadoff hitter. And he didn't try to do too much with that pitch. It was kind of in on the hands, and he just was able to smash it into center field with a little bit of an inside out swing. So here's Brandon Bannon, and I know. UIS fans have been accustomed to hearing him introduced as your catcher, but he's back at shortstop. That's because Barnard back in the lineup. So Bannon this year has gone from your second baseman, filling in nicely at catcher for Barnard, and now your shortstop here in Cary, at least for game one. Bannon first team all conference, first team all region, the junior. A good look there at Asher Brad at first after his well-deserved leadoff single. This is a potent offense for Illinois Springfield. They average 10 runs a game, fifth in the nation, 
and they have outscored opponents in the postseason 103 to 53 while going nine and one in the postseason. So they just kept going with their offense even in the postseason. Runner on first, nobody out. And Halligan over to first. Of course, UIS punched their ticket this week by beating Quincy. It took three games in that Springfield Re Super Regional. Of course, a little turnabout. Quincy's a team that they see in their own conference, but last year actually lost to Quincy in the NCAA Regionals. This year able to return the favor and end the season of the Hawks. Looking the dugout of Point Loma, of course, again, out of sunny San Diego. Asher Brad with a leadoff single. Brandon Bannon at the plate, the 1-1 offering. Home plate umpire is Trevor Henson, joined by Adam Berg at first, Ray Chamberlain at second, and Steve Zawiski over at third. We'll dive into replay that's available to our coaches throughout this week, later in the broadcast. 2-1 shot again into center, back-to-back -back base hits to begin things for the Prairie Stars. As they are going right at one of your top pitchers in the nation. Same thing right there with Bannon. I mean, that was like a replay of the Brad at bat. Get into a decent pit, uh, hitting count and then smack one off the middle. Those two balls were hit real hard. He hit that one more on the barrel of the bat than Brad did. Joe, this is how our last game started. First two men of the ball game reach. Yeah. Though neither would score in that first affair. Here's Zion Pettigrew. He was your player of the year in the GLBC. An All-American, the senior out of Chicago. Mentioned Pettigrew, also part of that defensive shift, moved from third base to second base near the end of this season. When they lost their catcher, uh, Pettigrew, your back-to-back -back conference and region player of the year. And a huge opportunity right here with nobody out. Both Brad and Bannon on the base pass. I mean, this guy's had an incredible career. 428 this year, and in his career, 432 batting average. So, I mean, he's been just so consistent. In the last 10 games, he's hitting 512. So Baxter Halligan looking for that first out, if not a double play ball. The 2-0 to Pettigrew, 3-0. And you've got Austin Otterman on deck with 16 home runs, 65 RBI, hoping that those bases are loaded with nobody else. Pettigrew at the plate, a modest 93 RBI this year with 27 home runs, the 3-0. If anybody had a green light, it would be him, but instead sees strike one. Halligan's only walked 18 batters in 88 innings, 111 strikeouts, so he generally doesn't walk a lot of hitters. He's gonna come after Pettigrew. Asher Brad, leadoff single, stands on second. Brandon Bannon singled as well behind him at first, and the count's gone full. Halligan's fastball gets up to 92 miles an hour. Also throws a curveball, changeup, and a slider. Only third base unoccupied with nobody out. Top of the first inning. Prairie Stars threatening. The 3 2 to Pettigrew. And we'll see if this at least advances one runner. Caught by Ochin, play at third. What an arm from Ochin to make it close. But Asher Brad is in there in time. Runners on the corners with one away. Wow. I mean, that was some kind of throw by Ochin. I think every team should be watching that that's participating in the D2 championship. You may not want to run too often on Ochin. That was an incredible throw. He almost had him. Great throw, and even when Asher Brad was transitioning from his foot to his hand on the bag, if he had not been as careful as he was, could have easily been called out. 
Here's Alderman. Fourth year junior. Takes the breaking ball, first pitch strike from Halligan. Alderman, first team all conference, was all region this year, grew up in Springfield, plays college ball for the team in his backyard. Runners on the corners with one out can still be a fruitful inning for the Prairie Stars as Eastern, Eastern Waterman keeps it in front of them. He's your backstop today. Otto Kemp at third, Scott Anderson at short, Jason Dumont at second, and Jacob Christian at first. Malone, Alvarez, and Ochin, who you just saw out there in right, are your outfielders from left to right. With one out, runners on the corner, still scoreless, the 1-1. One -one. And this should put the Prairie Stars on the board. Austin Alderman shoots one to the left. And that will bring home Asher Brad, who led off this ball game with a single. Three hits here in the first inning for UIS. As a run has crossed. Boy, they are swinging the bats great to start out. Every ball that's been hit to the outfield is a legit line drive. That'll give way to another all-region standout, Cal Youngquist. 13 home runs on the year, 72 RBI for the number five hitter. Still just one out. Brandon Bannon on second after his single. Austin Alderman with his RBI single on first. And a bumpy start here for Baxter Halligan. And Point Loma. In our first game, each team scored in exactly one inning. A three to one final. In which Southern Arkansas would hand a loss to Rollins. Count one and two. UIS made its way to its second ever Super Regional this year. They got to play in one back in 2019. They punched their first ever ticket to carry this year. A dramatic series against conference rival Quincy in the Super Regional last weekend. Still just one out. Only third base unoccupied. It's Vanneman on deck, Deacon Silas in the hole. Right now, it's Youngquist at the plate with a one-two count to his name. A lefty lefty matchup. UIS already up by one. A chance to get out of the inning here. Anderson takes it himself over to first. The inning ending double play, but not before. Austin Alderman with the third hit of the inning brings home Asher Brad and gives the Prairie Stars a lead to work with, albeit just one run score. Well, an eventful top half of the first inning. For the debutante Prairie Stars of UIS out of the Great Lakes Valley Conference, Lincoln Rose, Joe Castellano with you. And Joe, able to plate one. Probably thought could have been an even bigger inning, but Colton Hale has a lead to work with. Yeah, that might be a really big double play that Halligan was able to induce to end that inning because the way Illinois Springfield was swinging the bats looked like they could get a lot more out of that. And this could be... A real dogfight. I mean, generally these two teams pitch well, especially Point Loma. They don't, they don't give up a lot. So to get out of that inning, that's really going to be helpful to them. They're one of the best teams in the country, number two seed here. We'll see how they do against Colton Hale. Colton Hale, first team all region, first team all conference. The fourth year junior is 12 and 1 on the year with 82 innings under his belt. A little more than a strikeout per inning pitched. It's his 16th start, 16th appearance. Otto Kemp will lead things off for Point Loma. Scott Anderson, Baxter Halligan, your pitcher in DH, your top third of the order due up. 
Kemp first team all conference out of Fullerton, California, the third year sophomore, has reached base every game of 2022. That's amazing. All 56 games he's been on base. That's a leadoff hitter. 16 home runs. Is that a leadoff hitter? <laughs> <laughs> well, he can do everything. Hitting 352, 58 RBI, the all region third baseman. Yeah, I mean, he's got an OPS over 1,000. So he gets on a lot. He hits for power. He just basically does it all and leads the team in walks with 39. The 1-1 one, one. in there for a strike. So, again, back behind home plate. It's no longer Brandon Bannon filling in for UIS. It's Bobby Barnard there. Day one starting catcher, battling back from injury. And able to knock that one down. Anthony DeConcelis is your third baseman. Brandon Bannon goes from catcher now to shortstop. So Mayhew available off the bench after being your shortstop much of the year. I said Mayhew. Mayor Hoffer, pardon me. Uh, Zion Pettigrew at second. Cal Youngquist at first. Vanneman, Brad, and Alderman, your outfielders from left to right. The 2-2 two -two to Kemp, and he finds a hole on the right side. Had there not been a shift, you'd have a second baseman planted right there for an easy 4-3 put out. But Pettigrew was shading pretty significantly over towards the base. A yes. single from Kemp. Just great hitting right there. Just going with a pitch, go the other way. Just a fantastic leadoff hitter and always on base. He's already struck up a friendship there with Cal Youngquist, the first baseman who's responsible for holding him on. Otto Kemp this year is 9 for 14 in the stolen base department. Scott Anderson makes his way to the plate now. Three eleven hitter with nine home runs, 46 RBI. One of those nine home runs, a dramatic walk-off against Hawaii Pacific earlier this year. Colton Hale with a lead to work with, tying run on first. Able to blow one by Anderson, one and one. Interesting style there for the catcher, Barnard, with a runner on to stretch his right leg out like that. I don't know how he gets up and throws out a base dealer like that, but that's his style. And you mentioned that he's been hurt. He actually has a broken hand that he's playing with today. They weren't sure that he was even going to play here in carry, talking about Bobby Barnard, the catcher. And he broke that hand just before the postseason, so it's been – about 10 games that he's missed, but here he is playing. I mean, usually it takes a while to heal a broken hand. It's his left hand, the one that he catches the baseball with. So there's no way to hide that injury? No, I mean, that you would think that'd be painful. Every single play? <laughs> Every single time you catch it. I also think it would be painful to have that kind of a stance as a catcher to – have your right leg stretched all the way out like that. You would think he's the one going to college in California. <laughs> Scott Anderson at the plate. Tying run on first is Otto Kemp. The one-two from Colton Hale. Driven into center. That ball's going to drop in front of Brad. And tell me if this sounds familiar. Hmm. Singles from the first two men in the lineup here in the first inning. Well, this game might come down to who does more clutch hitting with runners on because it looks like the two teams are not going to have a problem getting runners on against two really good pitchers. You mentioned Hale being 12-1 and one this year, 29-3 and three in his career. So this guy rarely loses, but here he is in the first inning in trouble. Problem is both these teams, all the teams we see this week, have a lot of impressive numbers and something yeah. has to give. By the way... Baxter Halligan, the man who's on the mound, last half inning, is your dangerous bat at the plate with the tying run in scoring position. Halligan got that double play to limit it to just one run. Baxter Halligan, Division II Pitcher of the Year, first-team All-American, 
the senior from Pacific City, Oregon. He's your region player of the year, conference player of the year, also pitcher of the year. Had a monopoly on all the major awards. Kemp and Anderson, your runners on the base paths. Kemp right there and your shot on second. Your tying run potentially. And then pitch tight to Halligan. Well, Halligan, he put on over 20 pounds of weight to get ready for this season and has really been swinging the bat well at 345 with his average. You mentioned the pitching. He's doing both today. Never leaves the batting cage, according to Coach James, but he also has to concentrate on pitching, so he's got a lot on his plate. Our two pitchers combined have three losses on the year. The 1-1. One, one. Up the middle. That'll get through. Baxter Halligan has just tied up the ball game as Otto Kemp comes home, and Halligan's going to take an extra 90 feet with that throw going all the way to third. So Kemp has leveled us here in the first inning. Anderson goes first to third, and Baxter Halligan with the RBI single stands in scoring position now as well. Well, all these hitters are not trying to do too much. I mean, he just hits the ball hard up the middle. Then it's decision time for Brad, the center fielder, and I think he should have just thrown the ball in the second. He's a little too aggressive there. He wasn't going to be able to get the runner, Anderson, anyway, who runs pretty well, and you end up setting up two men in scoring position because you didn't throw it into second. So that is where the script from the bottom half of the first has deviated from the top half of the first. Here's Hunter Ochin with a lead 90 feet away in the form of Scott Anderson. And Baxter Halligan right behind him, standing there on second. Ochin, a San Diego native, went to Point Loma High. Seems like it was destiny that he would be a sea lion. Ochin, a two-way player in his own right. Yeah, we saw his arm in right field. Threw a strike. And also a pitcher, so like you said, two-way player. I mean, you can see what kind of arm he has. 330 hitter with a healthy cut. 11 home runs. Was looking for number 12 right there. 45 RBI. Three batters for the Sea Lions have come to the plate, all with singles. It has led to a run and two men in scoring position right now. The one-two from Hale. Punched the other way, fell. And this is the player, Ochen, who keeps things loose for Point Loma. You can see him kind of jumping up a little bit. He's got some quirks about him. Look at him in the batter's box. We'll get a shot of him. He does kind of a hand motion that he hits his helmet and the right side of his body. Coach James told us that he's a crazy guy, a spark plug, and a dirty bird. Those were the terms that he used to describe Ochen. Most importantly, he's your cleanup hitter. The one-two. Shot to center. This gets in front of Brad. This could score two. They'll settle for one. The first lead of the ball game for the Sea Lions now comes here in the first inning. That's four straight singles and a two-to-one lead for Point Loma. Wow. I mean, everybody's hitting line drives to the outfield right now on both teams. The first base for number 26, Jacob Christian. Has every ball been hit to center? <laughs> uh, I think we had one in the left center and one in the right center. But, yeah. I mean, man, we've already got seven hits in this game. How many did we have in the last game total? I think ten. I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> Here's Jacob Christensen, your number five hitter for Point Loma. How big was that double play ball that Baxter Halligan got last half inning? Now Baxter... Stands on third after his single this inning. Tied the game. He can give himself insurance if he can come home. There's still three outs to work with. Jacob Christian, your freshman of the year in the PacWest Conference. First team all-conference in his freshman campaign. Hitting 332 with 12 home runs and 55 RBI. Your fifth batter this inning. 
Two runs have scored, no outs recorded. One and one. Rollins, who we saw in our last game, had nine wins all of last year. You talked about a turnaround. Well, Point Loma last year, 11 wins. Hmm. And here they are, one of two 48-win teams colliding in this contest. The 1-1. Chance for two. They'll concede the run. As a double play, brings home Baxter Halligan, a 3-1 score line. But now... Two outs, UIS just trying to get out of this first inning. Well, that's helpful right there. No RBI for Christian to get two outs there on one ground ball. Has to feel like for Hale that he finally got something to go his way because uh, this could really have been a huge inning. Brings up the Point Loma catcher, Easton Waterman. Easton, the senior out of Redding, California. 248 hitter on the year. And, yeah. Zion Pettigrew, the second baseman, just froze. He knew he was not going to be able to get that ball. Just well placed by Waterman, and that's a two-out single fourth hit of the inning. The left fielder, number five, Jack Malone. Here at Coleman Field at the National Training Grounds of USA Baseball. Long time home here in Cary, North Carolina, the Division II Baseball Championship. Only one former national champion is back this year. Two teams from last year's field are back. First pitch to Jack Malone, punched out towards left. Vanneman back into the shade and able to make the catch in the shadows. But not before Point Loma. Dials up five hits in the first and scores three. They overcome a one-run deficit and claim a two-run lead after one here in Cary. No place you'd rather spend uh, a nice uh, early evening in June. Cary, North Carolina taking in some quality baseball. Two games each day for the foreseeable future. No mm -hmm. complaints. Yeah, we got two tomorrow. Southern New Hampshire and Angelo State at 1.30 Eastern, followed by 6 o'clock Eastern, North Greenville, the number one seed against Westchester. Westchester, the only return... Returning former national champion, you mentioned Angelo State and Southern New Hampshire will face each other. They were both here last year, but it was Wingate who won it and kept the title here in North Carolina. Here's Brant Vanneman. He faces Baxter Halligan, who was able to swing a bat in his own right last inning. Halligan with a single and would score. That has given Point Loma a 3-1 to -one lead after one. That's a foul ball, chopped over to Otto Kemp at third. Brant Vanneman, second team all-conference this year, the redshirt freshman out of Spring Valley, Illinois. Boy, what does it take to be first team all-conference? He hit 322, 16 home runs, 67 RBI. Again, the Prairie Stars of UIS are 48 and nine. The Sea Lions at Point Loma are 48 and eight on the year. Angelo State already has its 50th win this season. Some incredible resumes. Two and one. Well, this is a Prairie Stars team that bats 340 as a team, ninth in the country. And they're averaging just over 10 runs a game, fifth in the nation. The 2-1. Again, mentioned that the Prairie Stars exited in their own regional last year against conference rival Quincy. They beat Quincy in the conference tournament final this year and then mentioned went three games last weekend in the Super Regional with Quincy. 
You know the outcome because the Prairie Stars are here. The Hawks are not. And as you were talking about most of these teams that are here, they're hot right now. I mean, this is how they got here. But how about for Illinois Springfield to be 28-3 and three since April the 1st? And two of their three losses were an extra inning. So they are really playing good baseball. Ryan Copeland hoping to record his 100th head coaching victory while here in Cary, sitting on 95 of them. And it's a leadoff walk to Vanneman. Second straight inning, Prairie Stars get their leadoff man on against Baxter Halligan. It's funny you should say that because Justin James on the other side, he got his 100th win in the clincher of the West region, the Super Regional, against Azusa Pacific. Yep. We'll have more on Coach James here in a moment. Here's Anthony DeConcilis for the Prairie Stars. Represents the tying run at the plate here in the top of the second. All right, so Point Loma's not exactly the first San Diego school we've seen here in recent memory. Those Tritons of UCSD who are now Division I used to regularly make it, whether it be to Cary or to Grand Prairie, Texas. When they were your runner-up in Grand Prairie, Justin James was the pitching coach on those Tritons teams in 17 and 18. I don't think he needed a lot of relocation budget when he <laughs> went over to Point Loma. But boy, what a view from that ballpark over there. Oh, my gosh. It's the first thing I talked about with Coach James, coach James when I talked to him on the phone uh, about what they call America's most scenic ballpark. And it really is, if you look at the website and the photo of Carol B. Land Ballpark, in San Diego, where Point Loma plays, it is just beautiful, right on the ocean. The 0-1. Carol B. Land, longtime head coach of the baseball program, namesake of the stadium, actually passed away back in December, so they wear those patches on their left sleeve, CBL. Yeah, you can see that right there for, for uh, Carol B. Land. Deacon Silas, the red shirt sophomore. Sophomore playing time when again, their catcher, Barnard went down, filled the void at third after the dominoes led to a opening at the hot corner. So 22nd start on the year for Deacon Silas, three home runs, 25 RBI. Vanneman walked to lead off this inning. It's a 3-1 count now to Deacon Silas, the subsequent hitter. By the way, since Coach James was a pitching coach at UC San Diego, as the head coach here with Point Loma, he calls all of the pitches for Halligan and all the pitchers for Point Loma. He was this year's PacWest and Region Head Coach of the Year. Runner on first, nobody out. Tying run at the plate. Back-to-back -back walks. Halligan did not concede a free pass in that first inning when the Prairie Stars took the lead initially. He's walked the first two here. And that is not only unusual for Halligan. I mentioned only 18 walks this year in 88 innings. For the team as well, this team only averages two and a half walks per nine innings, second fewest in the nation for a pitching staff. And here we are with back-to-back -back walks to start the second. And here's your DH, Hunter Phelps. Phelps, a senior, hitting 301, seven home runs, 35 RBI. First pitch he sees. If he can punch one on the right side, he's got almost 90 feet separating the second baseman and the first baseman over there. But I suspect they are aware of a pretty good scouting report. I mean, he could almost push a bunt through them. It's exaggerated by the fact that Dumont, the second baseman, has to hold on the runner to keep him honest. Same can be said for Christian at first. Good look there. Two on, nobody out. Tying runs on first. And that is a couple of pitches that Phelps just cannot figure out from Halligan. Good breaking ball right there by Halligan. Look 
Well, he, he pitched brilliantly against Azusa Pacific in the Super Regional. Seven innings, one run, one hit, no walks, 10 Ks. More of a struggle today. This one will knock it out of the infield. Infield fly rule. Squeezed in for good measure from Jacob Christian, one away. As a team, Point Loma leads the nation in whip, too. Walks and hits per innings pitched, 1.11. Yet, Halligan already gave up three hits in the first and two walks here in the second. And he's just trying to be a clutch pitcher, get out of this and keep the lead. All right, so here's your nine hitter, a young man battling back from a broken hand who's also catching for you. Bernard. Senior showed bunt, pulled back, hitting 315. It's his 41st start on the year. Again, that injury towards the end of the season. Got hit by a pitch, and he missed 13 games. The last 13, so he's just coming back today for this game. Two on, including the tying run at first. His counterpart, Waterman, tracks that one down to keep both runners where they are. It's got to be hard to get your timing back here for a Division II championship after you've been out 13 games. Oh, you don't think coming back to face uh, National <laughs> Pitch of the Year? Yeah, it'd be kind of tough. Would be an ideal comeback? No. You saw him square around for a bunt the first time. Not going to happen here with an 0-2 count. Drop third strike. There's nowhere to go as Halligan has retired the last two. Back-to-back -back innings. Prairie Stars have been able to get their first two men on. They scored one in the first. Can they match that here? Here is the lone man to score, Asher Brad. He's singled to begin this ball game. Now bats for a second time as we're still in the second inning. Runner on second, Vanneman. Walk to lead off the inning, followed by the walk of Deacon Silas, the latter of whom represents the tying run right now. In a three to one ball game. It's always interesting to see the second time up for a batter against a pitcher when these teams haven't faced each other and the adjustments that are made on both sides. Still a huge hole on the right side. And this one is punched down the right field line, but foul. Remember that at bat Brad had in the first inning when he got it full and was able to knock one into center. It's about the eighth pitch he saw. It would be the first of three singles that inning. But a double play would cut that inning short of its potential. Fifth batter this inning. 1-1 one, one offering to Asher Brad. So walks to Vanneman and Deacon Silas, then the pop out from Phelps on the infield fly, and the strikeout of Bobby Bernard. Each team at one point held a lead in that first inning. Right now it's Point Loma up by two. Two and two. Well, that's a pitch that Brad wanted to jump on right there, the fastball over the middle of the plate. Just the 12th season of baseball for UIS. In their 13th year as a Division II program, previously in the NAIA, I should say athletic department. Count goes full. But they already have some D2 history. Ten grand slams this year for UIS, and as impressive as that is, kind of seems lazy when you consider they had nine in 2020 when they only played 14 games. Wow. Yeah, Ryan Copeland's done a great job putting together this team. The payoff pitch, and we'll do it again. In his third season, you mentioned approaching 100 wins. 
And uh, he was a pitching coach for Illinois Springfield before he became the head coach. And as a pitcher, he was at Illinois State, their career all-time leader in innings pitched. So a durable pitcher when he was a player. Halligan trying to get out of the inning with still a two-run lead in tech. And the count will stay full. Runners obviously will continue to break with a 3-2 count and two outs, trailing by two. Early in this one, but already this has been a much different ball game than what we saw in our earlier affair. Halligan's already thrown 50 pitches. We're only in the second inning. Both of those starting pitchers went the distance, and right now it's tough to imagine either of these could endure what they have here early on and make it to the finish line. Again, the 3-2 offering with two on. Into center. Alvarez, though, is there to make the catch, and the Prairie Star. Look into the dugout, Hunter Ochin with a recently uh, improved do. You mentioned he was a pretty straight arrow. I think that's reflected by the uh, the Mohawk. <laughs> well, we were told he's the dirty bird of the team and his goal is that he really wants to go skydiving. So maybe if Point Loma wins, he'll get a chance to go skydiving. I have a feeling that one uh, will not be on his bucket list for too much longer. <laughs> Jason Dumont, third-team all-conference, second baseman. More importantly, he was the PLNU Business Administration Student of the Year. Let's see what he can do here out of the eighth spot. Is he multitasking, maybe studying while he's playing ball? Because he's got a lot of notes, I think, on his belt buckle. Don't tell his professors. Right there. See all those notes? That's great for final exams. Yeah, yeah or the midterm. Now towards center, Asher Brad, one away. That's the first leadoff batter for either team today to be retired. Well, these two teams have been swinging the bats. We only have one strikeout so far. And both of these pitchers came in with a reputation of striking out a lot of hitters. But that is not happening so far in this game. Here's the Palm Desert, California native, senior Isaiah Alvarez, second team all-conference in the Pac West this year. 315 hitter, three home runs, batting in the nine spot. Colton Hale on the mound. Thought perhaps that deficit might evaporate last half inning. But unlike his counterpart, he does not swing a bat in the lineup. Did not have a chance to affect things. Just trying to keep it a two-run deficit. Well, Hale is the career strikeout leader for the school with 202 coming in, but no strikeouts so far today. Every time we say something about a school record, though, keep in mind that Illinois Springfield is only in the 12th year of their program. Yeah. Uncharted territory for both these programs, each making it here for the first time. Caught looking. There's the strikeout for Colton Hale, two away. And it just froze Alvarez, 90-mile-an-hour fastball. And he is caught looking because I don't think he was looking for a fastball. I mean, he just throws that low. He's in a good spot. Here's Otto Kemp. He has singled and scored already, now batting for a second straight inning. Usually a good sign for your offense. First pitch strike from Hale. Hale is a junior, but this is his fifth year in the program on the mound for Illinois Springfield. Lots of experience. By the way, that single last inning, and now being hit by pitch, Otto Kemp still has reached base every single ball game. Yeah. It, I mean, we just assumed it would come to an end this week at some point. 57 games played, 57 games reaching base. And sometimes he can do it this way. 
Uh, that barely, I think. May have taken a button off the shirt. Yeah, or did it take the shirt? Yeah, maybe. That's the best way to go. Gives way to Scott Anderson. Wouldn't mind a little two-out rally here. Kemp on first. Anderson scored after singling in the first. And Colton Hale continues with first pitch strikes. By the way, that was the 20th time this season that Kemp has been hit by a pitch, most on the team. Had a softball championship last week where a batter was hit by pitch, threw both arms in the air, and just luckily guessed, probably just broke the school record. Hmm. That was the case. Yeah, some players just have a knack for getting hit by pitches. 0-2 hole here for Scott Anderson. First two batters were retired this inning. Mindful until this half inning, the first two batters of every inning were reaching base for promising starts thus far. Point Loma trying to do it the hard way. Runner on first, Kemp, the 0-2. Right side, that gets through. Let's see if Kemp goes to third. He'll slam on the brake, sees the stop sign. So two men reach now with two outs. Scott Anderson is two for two, and it's just the second inning. Well, he's gone to center. Now he goes to right. That's just good hitting because you know that the first baseman is holding the runner on, so there's a pretty big hole over there. So if you can hit a ground ball, it's going to be an easy base hit. And here's some more self-help for Baxter Halligan. Starting pitcher for Point Loma had an RBI single in the first inning. Before he himself was able to score the most recent run. Again, Halligan is your region and conference, both pitcher and player of the year. Lays off that one. What a great athlete. I mean, to be a pitcher and a hitter. And in high school, he was on the swim team, also played water polo. He's into surfing. At the same time, Point Loma has two pitchers with no hitters this year, and he's not one of them. Yeah. Dylan Miller and Jack Gonzalez. Left side. That one will get past DeConcealis. Inning should be over. Instead, Otto Kemp comes home. Oh, it was a gift wrap ball. Just needed to touch third to get out of the inning, and it looked like Deacon Silas may have lost his footing. Well, that ball had a lot of spin on it, too. I'll be curious to see how that looks on a replay because that ball was hit off the end of the bat, and it was really cued out there, and I think it fooled Deacon Silas. And he's shaking his head going, wait a minute, where was that ball going? He was just spinning as it went out there. So Baxter Halligan has been able to bring home a couple. There, there's, there's the crazy antics before he gets in the box. <laughs> he's got quite a routine. Pretty tame for a guy with a mohawk by my standards. <laughs> Initial ruling is in error. Official score reserves the right to change that. Especially if there's a stern phone call from a, the dugout. But right now, it is four to one. All of this with two outs. Jacob Christian grounded into that double play that ended the first. <laughs> Ochin is just a bundle of energy, isn't he? Jumping up and down. Good thing he's wearing a helmet. I mean, he's hitting his head pretty hard sometimes. Oh, 
he strike you as the kind of guy who might headbutt a teammate who's wearing a helmet when he himself <laughs> forgot to put on a helmet? Well, he's a spark plug, as Coach James said. But he did say he's crazy, and, and you can kind of see the craziness right there. He's a different bird. Sea line. <laughs> two on, two out. This one's going to be out of play. This began with a fly out and a strikeout of the eight and nine hitters, but the top of the order, a hit batter, a single. I think they're ruling uh, Halligans as a single now, RBI single. You can understand it either way. That gives them two RBI today. But well, Nomar Garcia Parra had nothing on Ojin with that routine that he has as he gets in the box. Just, well, yeah, just needs batter, uh, batter's gloves to readjust. This one punched out towards right. Alderman ranging, struggling a little bit. Can't make the catch. Is it a fair or foul ball? They say foul. Wow. That is a huge break right there for Illinois Springfield, the Prairie Stars, because if that ball drops, you're going to have two runs score, and it's probably going to be Ooh. a triple. Well, did it then clear over the wall? I didn't see if it cleared over the wall. You might be right. Yeah, so I think that it would have been, been an automatic double. double. Yeah. yeah, so you would have just had one run score. Man, that was close. I love the way Ochin ran the bases there. I mean, he was sprinting around first. He was thinking third base right out of the box. All of this with two outs. They've already added one run this inning. Again, the 2-2 two -two to Hunter Ochin, your cleanup hitter. Full count. Scott Anderson, your runner on second. Baxter Halligan, your runner on first. But I wonder if he realizes he's doing all that stuff. I mean, he bends down, grabs the dirt, jumps up and down, hits his helmet, hits the side of his leg. After a while, I wonder if he even realizes that whole routine. It's a calming mechanism. <laughs> the payoff pitch. Runners going left side and a little bit of a second chance for Deacon Silas, and this time comes through. But not before six men come to the plate for the Sea Lions, and they add to their advantage here in Cary. Now leading after two, four to one. Let's go back to the last half inning and check this fly ball to Alderman and right. Did this land fair? Did it hit his glove? If it hit his glove right there, then it's a fair ball because he's in fair territory. And then when it landed, it looked like it might have been in fair territory. It was called foul, and that would have scored a run. I think you have a decent claim that that's an automatic double. Yeah, it would have been an automatic double because watch it bounce, and eventually it does go over the wall. But instead... Ochin ended up grounding into a force play, and it was not a run, but it is four to one. Point Loma leading Illinois Springfield as we go to the third. Alongside Lincoln Rose, I'm Joe Castellano. Fans enjoying a beautiful day for two ball games to start the Division II Baseball Championship. Brandon Bannon leads off for Illinois Springfield against Hall Hannigan, and he takes a strike. Halligan, I should say. Owen won the count. Bannon had a single to center in the first inning. And the Prairie Stars have had no trouble getting base runners against Halligan so far. They had three singles in the first. This one's popped up. The second baseman coming over, Dumont calling, one away. And a couple of walks to start the second for Halligan, but he didn't allow any runs. He was able to get out of that unscathed. Joe, I believe this is the fifth year we have replay available to coaches. That, with that said, we have so many new coaches, they aren't familiar with it because, frankly, they've gone their whole careers without having that opportunity. Yeah. And so a reminder, our coaches have two challenges each game. If you get your challenge correct, you keep it. So you could have almost an infinite number of challenges. Now, once the seventh inning comes around, they can also call down from our lead official upstairs to actually call for a review even if it's not initiated by the coaches. That one might have been worth looking at as Pettigrew swings and fouls it back to the screen. But that would have been a coach-initiated challenge. Right. And, boy.
boy, um, as soon as I saw that ball drop and clear over the fence and it wasn't off by much, I thought immediately that was probably going to be worth another look, but just trusted that everybody thought they saw it the way it was called. Yeah, that would have been Coach James calling for it, but he did not. And the count one and two to Pettigrew, who flied to right his first trip. Ridiculous numbers coming in, 428, 27 homers, and 93 RBIs. 93 RBIs leading Division II. Stands up there with a bit of a closed stance. You don't see that very often these days. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good breaking ball by Halligan. Two away. For obvious reasons, that is a big out. As Pettigrew now 0 for 2 today. The right that is a good breaking ball down and into a right-handed batter like that. So second strikeout for Halligan. Here's Austin Alderman and an RBI single in the first inning. Breaking ball down and in, 1-0 to Alderman. Halligan originally from Oregon, born in Bend, Oregon, which is a beautiful little town in central Oregon. He grew up in Pacific City, Oregon. Six foot two left hander. On the third base side of the rubber. That ball's hit in the hole. It's short. Diving effort by Anderson, but no play. It'll be a two out single for Alderman, who has two hits today and two at bats. Yeah, that's going to be a base hit regardless of whether or not Alderman was able to glove it cleanly. Just was going to be too deep in the hole. But Alderman, as you point out, two for two here against Halligan. Four hits now for the Prairie Stars. And Cal Youngquist comes up 0 for 1, grounded into an inning ending 6 3 double play in the first inning. And that really helped Halligan because he was in trouble giving up three hits to the first four batters. A breaking ball outside 1 0 to Youngquist. Youngquist, hands down, one of the biggest reasons why UIS is still playing baseball this year. He's got five home runs in the postseason. 13 on the year. Good power. That's down and away. And they're trying to stay away from him here, 2 0. Oh. I think most of the experts believe that it's a given. We'll see offense this week from UIS. It's just whether or not their pitching is what it has been when they've needed it the most this season. Called strike outside part of the plate, 2 and 1. The Prairie Stars have hit 109 homers, seventh in the country. Yeah, five players with at least 10. Including this man, Youngquist. The on-deck man, Vanneman, has 16. Tough part of the lineup. Here's the pitch, and he is just living on the outside part. He missed that time. So Halligan has a count of three and one. He is just not going to give in here to Youngquist and give him anything middle in, at least so far. And you hate to walk him and have the tying run come to the plate, but you don't want a home run. The 3-1. Strike called. That was kept away a little bit, too. Senior against senior right here. It's a tough sun over there at first base. That's why the first baseman, Christian, has the sunglasses on. There goes the runner, 3-2, ground ball, base hit, right field. The runner automatically going there, and he will go all the way to third, Alderman. That ball hit hard by Youngquist, and that's the fifth hit now for the Prairie Stars. Alderman has the luxury on a 3-2 count with two outs to be going on the pitcher's motion. That allows him to go from first to third. Jacob Christian, who's holding on the runner, makes a great diving effort in the infield, but just can't keep that ball from squirting out to Ochin. Now Brant Vanneman, who walked in the second inning. The redshirt freshman, who has 16 homers. First and third, two outs. A little two-out rally try here for the Prairie Stars. 1-0 to Vanneman. Nice block there by Waterman. May have saved a run. We already have more hits in this game than our last one. Yeah. Our last game, by the way, was a nine-inning ball game. We're only in the third. Four runs, seven hits for Point Loma. One run, five hits for Illinois Springfield. 
Vanneman grounds one towards short. Should be the inning. Anderson will throw to first. Close play, though. Got him. And that does it for the Prairie Stars in the third. They had two hits, but they leave two. They've left five on base in the first three innings. Middle of the third, four to one. Bottom of the third inning we go at Coleman Field in Cary, North Carolina. This is the second game of the Division II Baseball Championship. Southern Arkansas won the first game against Rollins 3-1. to one. So the winner of this game will play Southern Arkansas on Monday night. The loser will play in an elimination game on Monday afternoon at 1.30. Jacob Christensen to lead it off for Point Loma, 0 for 1, grounded into a 6-4-3 Double play that scored a run in the first, and he takes the ball 1-0. Christian, a freshman, the Pac West Freshman of the Year. Had a game-tying homer and a game-winning hit in the Super Regional against Azusa Pacific. So he has been clutch. As to win the West, Point Loma won two out of three in that Super Regional against Azusa Pacific. 2-0 to Christian. He'll be followed by Waterman and Malone. 5, 6, and 7 in the order. Called strike as they face Colton Hale, the St. Joseph, Illinois native. 3 through, three through 5 spots in this lineup have been kind of a constant shuffle. But same three men. Christian finds himself in the 5-hole today. And he's ahead 3-1 and one now. Opponents only hit 229 against Hale this season. Twelve and one record for Hale, tied the school record for wins. Three one to Christian, strike called. He thought it was ball four. Christian getting a little clarification on the strike zone, I think, from Trevor Hinson, the home plate umpire. Now the payoff pitch coming from Hale. Whacked foul down the third baseline. Remains three and two. Mentioned it was Azusa Pacific who stood in their way in the Super Regional. Those two teams have played 15 times in the last two years. Wow. That was the eight times last year, seven times this year. You're talking about regular season, conference tournament, NCAA tournament. Of course, last year, uh, Point Loma did not fare well. Overall, going 11 and 21. This year, got the better of the exchange. Ball four to Christian. So he works a walk the first of the game for Hale. That'll bring up Easton Waterman, who singled in the first inning. Point Loma, they were able to score three in the first after they were down three to one as they put four base hits in a row, four singles in a row to start the inning. A couple of RBI singles by Halligan and Ochin. Run scored on a double play ball. And then another run came in in the second, and that was on a Halligan ball that was squibbing towards third, was ruled an RBI single. Squared a bunt, pulled back, and taken for a strike. Waterman behind 0-1. We've seen UIS strand five base runners. Point Loma has stranded three. But Point Loma clearly realizes UIS is capable of getting those base runners. They'll try to find as much insurance as they can here, still early. Christian jumps off to his lead at first. Not a base dealer's lead. Squared a bunt, pulled back, and that's a ball. One and one to Waterman. You were mentioning playing Azusa Pacific so much, and Coach Justin James for Point Loma pointed out to us that I mean, he thinks the West Coast gets hated on in the rankings, although Point Loma did get the number two seed here, so that's good. They always get one broadcaster here, don't they? <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> but he talked about how there are no easy weekends playing in the West and the deep talent 
that there is. I mean, especially in Southern California. Quite a pool of players that you can try to recruit from in Los Angeles and San Diego areas. We're witnessing the first sincere bunt attempt of the entire yeah. of the entire day. You're right. It did not happen in our earlier three to one low scoring affair. No small ball to be had. Waterman trying to move Christian. One two is upstairs. Two and two. So no more bunting with two strikes, you would think. Waterman missed the first eight games this year. The team went 8-0. and Probably thought his starting gig might uh, be in jeopardy. Able to get the job back, despite a great job from Jake Intrican. Full count to Waterman. Waterman is a senior that a lot of the players look up to because of his experience. Studying that chart there on his belt buckle. So the first two batters have gone full. The first one walked in Christian. Now Waterman, we'll see what he does here. The payoff pitch, lined to center field, right at Brad for out number one. Even the outs have been balls that have been hit pretty hard in this game. Everybody seems to be swinging it. Yeah, there's reason to believe this will not be a four to one final. Fielder, yeah. Malone. Here comes Jack Malone, 0 for one fly to left. He's a freshman. Up against Hale, who, with the 12 wins, second in the nation. Somebody who had to come back from Tommy John surgery a few years back. Hale deals, and that's in there for a called strike, 0-1. That shortened season last year for Point Loma basically was just playing the three teams over and over and over again. That can get boring. Especially if those teams are beating you. <laughs> that would be annoying. A little more robust schedule this year, including seeing former head coach Joe Schaefer, who we saw last year with his new team, Northwest Nazarene. They played him in February and met him again in the regional. This year. 1-1 one, one to Malone. Here it is. Way outside. 2-1. and one. Well, we already talked about how Coach James has been here before as a pitching coach with UC San Diego. And that team playing in the Division II Championship. So he learned a thing or two about what it takes to win at the D2 Championship. And he says there are two keys. Pitching and toughness. And he says the team that plays more like themselves the quickest is the team that usually wins. Ground ball to second should be two. Pettigrew to second one. Bannon to first. In time. A little evening siesta here at Coleman Field in Cary, North Carolina. Nice to relax there on the berm. I don't think it's that quiet to be able to get a snooze in, but he's enjoying it. It's not a snoozer if you like offense so far. These teams swinging the bat well. Pitchers have been able to get out of some jams, though, to kind of uh, tame it a bit. Four to one lead for Point Loma over Illinois Springfield as we go to the fourth. Again, winner of this game will have two days off and then face Southern Arkansas. Loser of this game, after tomorrow off, we'll be back on Monday in our first elimination game. Am I making that up? No, yeah, both of these teams have to play Monday. So one day off, according to my chart right here. <laughs> here we go to the fourth with DeConcilis, called strike 0-1. We don't just have elimination games. We, we have both teams in action. Yeah, I, we've I, got, be I believe you. You've got yeah, it right there. Rollins is waiting for an elimination game at 1.30 on Monday against the loser of this game. Okay. And that's always tough. It, you know, you could be gone after three days yep. at the D2 championship. And then that's followed by a winner's bracket game. Yes. 
DeConcealis walked in the second. He has a count of one and one facing Halligan here. Seven, eight, and nine in the order up here for the Prairie Stars. And DeConcealis takes outside two and one. It is a true double elimination tournament. So once we're down to two teams, whether they are both unbeaten or one of them has a loss, we'll keep playing until somebody has two losses. There's a strike, two and two. Still seven days away from crowning a national champion. We'll see what Halligan's made of because he's at 72 pitches. We're only in the fourth inning. We didn't see any pitching changes in our first game of the day. That's poked down the right field line. Could be trouble. Ochin coming over. First baseman diving. Christian can't get it, but it is a foul ball. Great effort. You knew that could be a tough play for all three players involved. Dumont also was over there. Yeah, slightly lower stakes on that one. Yeah, you knew it was going to be foul. But good effort, especially by Christian at the end of the play. To me, for the first baseman, that's the toughest play because he's going back on it. DeConcealis with a count of two and two. Halligan deals. Swing and a miss, strike three. Got him with an off-speed pitch there for his third strikeout. No inning has been easy for Halligan. No, second straight inning, he at least keeps the leadoff man off, off the base pants. But well, with two outs last inning, he gave up a couple of hits. Let's see what happens here with Hunter Phelps. 0 for 1, pop to first. The left-hander deals. Low and in, 1 and 0. Bottom third of this lineup against Baxter Halligan. 0 for 3 with a walk today. Phelps has been hitting 351 in the postseason. Takes a strike, one and one. Yeah, that's 50 points better than even his season average. Now, you know they're not hanging their heads down by three runs because the Prairie Stars have been swinging the bats well in this game and swinging them well for a while. That's popped up. The sun could be an issue here, but getting under it is Dumont. Two away. I think it was tougher for the first baseman Christian with his son over there, but Dumont could see that pretty well. Yeah, you're running in and out of shadows. You just wonder sometimes that contrast the catcher, Bobby will play games with you. Well, they're not wearing their sunglasses on their eyes, so they must feel comfortable the way it is. Here's Bobby Barnard, 0 for 1 struck out in the second. I don't know what's tougher when you have a broken left hand trying to catch pitches as the catcher for Barnard who has that broken hand or trying to swing when you haven't played in a while. Ground ball to shortstop for Anderson. One, two, three inning for the first time tonight for Halligan. We've played three and a half here in Cary in game two of the D2 championship. Four to one point Loma. Stun, the sun's starting to set here on a beautiful evening in Cary, North Carolina for the second game of the D2 Baseball Championship. 4-1, to one, Point Loma leading Illinois Springfield as we go to the bottom of the fourth. And it'll be Dumont, Alvarez, and Kemp, 8-9-1 in the order against Colton Hale. Well, both pitchers seem to be settling down a little bit after the early scoring. Yeah, both pitchers just got to face the minimum the last time up. Now for Colton Hale, that was thanks to a double play after he walked the leadoff hitter last inning. He also had a double play ball in the first that limited the damage. There have been three double plays in this game. If not for those, we would have had a lot more runs on the board because we've had plenty of base runners with 12 hits and three walks. Here's Jason Dumont, who flied to center his first trip, bluffs a bunt, and takes the ball 1-0. There's Colton Hale, played football in 
high school as well as baseball. Been St. Joseph, Illinois. Big right-hander, deals. Check swing, and that's a strike. That's a called strike against Dumont. He wondered about that. He's looking at the home plate umpire, Trevor Hinson. One and one the count to Dumont. JC transfer is Dumont. Takes outside. Yeah, a lot of these coaches able to take advantage of finding transfers. Young men who already had a year or so in the weight room and begun transitioning into college baseball players. Another recruit from Oregon. He's from Portland. Skies one to center. Brad going back to his right. One away. That'll bring up Isaiah Alvarez, who struck out looking in the second. The only K for Colton Hale. Man who is the school's career strikeout leader, only has one strikeout in this game. Averaging 10.9 strikeouts per nine innings are the Prairie Stars as a pitching staff, third in the nation, but not getting much in that regard today. Alvarez, the number nine hitter, freshman, takes in the dirt, 1-0. Alvarez from Palm Desert, California. And actually, got two different things on him. He's actually a senior, according to what I'm seeing now. I don't think we know what any of these terms <laughs> mean anymore. Does a senior mean four years, five years, <laughs> six years? Well, Does it mean you get a discount for a 4 p.m. dinner somewhere? One of my pieces of paper says yeah. freshman. The other says senior. I'm going to go with senior. He looks yeah. experienced. Sometimes the data <laughs> doesn't transfer. <laughs> That's a breaking ball that wasn't even close. The count going to two and one to Alvarez with one out, nobody on. The big news confirmed this past month in the Pac West is they will go to a conference tournament for their automatic bid starting next year. We still see several conferences, like including the Sunshine State Conference, that just plays out a regular season. And if you can survive that and be the top team, give you the automatic bid. We like drama. We like an extra week of stress yeah. <laughs> in those conference championships. Well, Point Loma was 25-7 and seven in the Pacific West. They were the first place team without a conference tournament. 48-8 and eight overall on the season. Ground ball right side. Base hit past the diving Pettigrew. A one-out single for the number nine hitter, Alvarez. And that's eight hits now for Point Loma. Eight hits from six different Sea Lions. So now the top of the order, and Otto Kemp, who has been aboard both plate appearances, a single, a hit by pitch, and he has scored two runs. Top of the order, third baseman, Otto Kemp. Now scored a team high 73 runs. So again, guy who's reached base every game, including twice today and scored twice today. And somebody who's had to endure an injury, a medical issue earlier in his career, a shoulder injury that he had, and he had to redshirt. But here he is, playing in the D2 championship for the first time, with his school in it for the first time. Both teams here for the first time in experiencing this. There goes the runner. Pitch high, throw to second by Barnard. Safe. Yeah, it's just a great jump from Alvarez. Otherwise, Barnard, back in the starting lineup today, makes a great throw down there. Tag applied, but Isaiah Alvarez really had a good read on Hale. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the first stolen base of this tournament. He's got the oven mitt on there to protect his hand on the slides. A lot of base stealers use that now. Tenth stolen base of the year, so he's in scoring position with one out. One and one to Kemp. Hale deals. Down and in, one and oh. Check that, two and one, I beg your pardon. Four to one point Loma trying to add to it here in the bottom of the fourth. Two and one, your count to Kemp. 
Hale deals. And check swing, pitch down and away. Did he offer? No, he didn't, says the first base umpire, Adam Berg, on the appeal. So now a three and one count to count. Camp, one of the leaders on this team, even though he's just a sophomore, redshirt sophomore. 3 1 pitch. Strike called, not to the liking of Kemp. All speed pitch. He was probably just looking for a fastball, and that's it. So now full count with one out runner at second. Shortstop Bannon checking the runner at second. 3 2 to Kemp. Strike three called. A breaking ball, Kemp caught looking for the second out on the second K by Hale. I was going to mention Otto Kemp obviously is seeing the ball pretty well this year, but at that time the umpire did not defer to him. Now Scott Anderson, two for two, two singles, and a run scored. Trying to pick up Alvarez from second. He singled and stole second. Hale deals, and it's in the dirt, blocked nicely by Barnard. As the sun sets, we've got shade pretty much everywhere except the right field corner and over at the first base coaching box. Lights are on here at Coleman Field. Pitch to Anderson, swing and a miss. He waved at that breaking ball. That fooled him badly. Well, Hale knows that his offense can come back. He just wants to try to keep it manageable at a three-run deficit. The pitch to Anderson. There's a strike called in the outer half. One and two, so Hale is looking for two straight strikeouts to get out of this. Of course, Colton Hale gets the start today, but at the beginning of the year, you might have Chad Saner pegged for this start. They lost one of their top starters at the beginning of the year. Masters, Davenport, and Hale have helped Fill those innings. Line to the right, Alderman. And that does it for Point Loma in the fourth. No runs ahead, a stolen base, but that runner, Alvarez, left it second at the end of four. Three run lead. Top of the order for Illinois Springfield as their fans are here mixed in with some uh, Southern New Hampshire Penman fans. They'll be in action tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern time, 10.30 a.m. Pacific time as they face Angelo State in a 4-5 matchup. And then tomorrow night, number one seeded North Greenville, the number one ranked team in the country up against eighth seeded West Chester, the only team here that has won a national championship. Yeah, I think we have some coaches who, even though their teams aren't in action today, are scouting some potential opponents later on this week. Asher Brad, the lead it off, the leadoff hitter in the order. One for two, a single, and he is lined to center. Takes a curveball for a called strike, 0-1. So Halligan, man, he got hit pretty hard in that first inning was fortunate to only give up one run after he had allowed three hits to the first four batters, all singles. Got a double play ball and kept that under control. There's a curveball for a strike. Then he walked the first two batters, very uncharacteristic of him in the second inning. Got out of that unscathed with three straight batters going down. Then after he got the first two batters in the third inning, he gave up back-to-back -back singles, got out of that unscathed, and then a one, two, three, fourth. And seems like maybe he's starting to get a good rhythm. Fly ball left field, chasing it is Malone. He's there, one away. 
Third straight inning, they've been able to keep the leadoff man off the base paths. Five in a row retired by Halligan. You know, sometimes a pitcher has some trouble early, and if you don't get to him for a bunch of runs, then he'll start cruising, and you really lament the fact that you did not take advantage of those opportunities you had early. And they ran up his pitch count early. He's now at 81 pitches. There's a called strike to Bannon. He's one for two, a single, and a pop to second. Well, you and I certainly recognize in that first game what we were watching unfold. Two starting pitchers, regardless of the outcome of the game, were really doing a great service for the rest of their bullpen. So usually if you have to dip into your bullpen once, that's not going to be the last time that game that you have to burn an arm. Yeah, it's always great if you can get a really good performance early from your ace pitcher, and that's what Halligan is here. One and one now to Bannon, and he takes a ball. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. This pitcher, Halligan, the pitcher and player of the year in his conference and the West region. I mean, you talk about a spectacular season on the mound and with the bat. And set the Pac West record for wins in a single season. That's a foul ball down the left field side as Halligan 12 and 2 coming into this game. First team All American player. Again, it's his 56th start in 57 games on the year. Obviously, not all as a pitcher, but this is right. an everyday player. He's just participating all the time. He will DH typically on his off days. Two balls, two strikes to Bannon. Little bouncer foul, third base side. Bannon was so hot in the Super Regional. Hit 417. And he, being the number two hitter, gets on base so much and scores a ton. 87 runs scored by Bannon this season. That oh. is third in Division Two. But he was hitting so well while also being the catcher at the time, filling in. Yeah. Pop up. Behind second base, settling under it is Dumont. Two down. Those first two batters are out, and that's six in a row retired by Halligan. Now Zion Pettigrew, who always is a guy you got to watch out for. 0 for 2, fly to right, struck out. Interesting the way Pettigrew was recruited. As it was a really good recruiting job, you could say, by Ryan Copeland, the head coach for Illinois Springfield. Swing and a miss as he got in touch with Pettigrew. And initially, Pettigrew played at Iowa, but then was going to transfer somewhere. And Copeland got in touch with him. He was recruiting him at one point in his career, I think, when he was at the JC. And Pettigrew called Copeland and remembered that phone call and said, you know, I want to play for you now that I'm transferring out of University of Iowa. I've picked your school. And Copeland couldn't be happier with that decision. Yeah, Zion certainly has Major League Baseball draft potential he's been one of the more dominant players in division two baseball for a couple years now high fly ball in the center field this should be a one two three inning alvarez settling under it and it is three up three down for halligan in the fifth he has now retired seven in a row we are halfway through game two of the d2 championship four to one point loma Alongside Lincoln Rose, I'm Joe Castellano here where the flags are flying. There's not a lot of wind. It's just been beautiful today at the Division II Baseball Championship in Cary, North Carolina. Not far from Raleigh and Durham, kind of right in between those two cities. Yeah, we haven't given a shout-out yet to our friends at Mount Olive every year, a big part of hosting this event Yeah, nearby Division II Institute. Jeff Eisen, longtime athletic director who allegedly retired this winter only to be Brought back and helped guide the way. He threw out the first pitch before this ball game. Yeah, he threw a strike. Uh, well, I'm kind of embellishing that. Yeah, we, ch <laughs> we, we, we challenged the call, and that was overturned. 
Owen won to Baxter Halligan. Yeah, I just said his name on the mound. He is also a hitter, so they don't need a designated hitter when he's pitching. Two for two at the plate, two RBIs. Comebacker off the glove of Hale, and that's going to be another hit. So Halligan three for three at the plate. Even on the rare occasion when Halligan is pulled from a start, just think, he can stay out there and still contribute to a ball game with that bat, and that time literally goes right at the opposing counterpart, Colton Hale. Well, he's hit the ball up the middle. He hit one to third that was off the end of the bat and got by the third baseman. It had a lot of spin on it. This time he goes back up the middle to the pitcher and gets an infield hit. Now Hunter Ochin, who we are very entertained by. I mean, look at this whole routine. Here we go again. This is going to be fun to watch if they go deep into this tournament. He's one for two, an RBI single, and he is grounded out to the third baseman. I want his at-bats to last a while so I get entertained. But not this time. He's going to bunt at third base side, and DeConcelis throws him out. Sacrifice is successful, going five to three. Small ball. Just trying to find some insurance. Doesn't Coach James know we want him to be in the box for a while so he can be entertained? But he does the job, and he has fun with it. Fun with his teammates. Yeah. I mean, he is always on, isn't he? I mean, I can't imagine a home run celebration would be better than that. He is wired. Jacob Christian at the plate, 0 for 1, grounded into an inning ending, or not an inning ending, but a painful double play in the first inning, and he has walked. Double play when they were really rallying, but still it's a 4 to 1 lead for Point Loma. And he has a chance to drive in another run here. Nine hits for the Sea Lions to five for the Prairie Stars. Called strike. Here's your starting pitcher for Point Loma right now in scoring position. Christian takes in the dirt, blocked nicely by Barnard. That's not the first time he's done that today. He's done a good job blocking balls. Made a good throw to second. Didn't catch the base stealer, but that base stealer had a good jump in Alvarez earlier. So you can see why they really like Barnard as the catcher. And they missed him when he was out with his hand injury. Halligan leads at second with one out. The pitch in there, called strike on that breaking ball. Two and two now to Christian. Christian really established himself as a force in the fall. He's taken a lot of the responsibility in the middle of this order, especially as the team needed to clinch the conference in the region. It's a big guy, 6'4", 225. Ooh, that just missed outside. Three and two now to Christian. Waterman on deck. Christian went on to claim PacWest Freshman of the Year honors. He even had the game-winning hit against Azusa Pacific in the Super Regional. Payoff pitch to Christian. Swing and a miss, strike three. Or did he get a piece of that? No, it was no. his backswing that caught the face mask, uh, Bobby Barnard, coming back from injury. And yeah. they're going to buy him a little bit of time. That, that's a, that can ring your bell sometimes. That's why the home plate umpire, Trevor Hinson, threw up his arms. I thought he was saying foul ball, but he was saying timeout. No, it was that follow-through that caught the mask, you hope. Yeah. Easton Waterman comes up. Is Easton Waterman using an Easton bat? That's what I want to know. Now with these NIL deals? So he can't use an Easton bat? No, I think it would be more likely. There's a strike, 0-1. More likely than a whiffle. I don't know if that's an Easton bat. I, that looks like, I don't, I don't know what that is. That looked like the seven of clubs or something. Runner at second, Halligan with two down.
Long look at second for Hale, and he deals. Called strike, 0 2. So Hale trying to pick up his second strikeout in a row. Our crew is trying to give you a little better look there. But I still don't know. We, we have knowledgeable yeah. viewers screaming at the top of their lungs <laughs> what kind of bat that is. I'm sure we'll hear on Twitter. That's the new Jay Z bat. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see if it's the kind of bat that can produce here. It's the new bat by Dre. Waterman. Strike three called. Hale does get his second consecutive strikeout to retire the side on his fourth K of the game. And after a leadoff single and the runner bunted over, nothing doing for Point Loma. We head to the sixth inning, four to one point Loma leading Illinois Springfield. Both pitchers kind of settling down and I think the Prairie Stars are probably saying, man, we should have taken advantage when we could against Halligan earlier. Now, his pitch count is starting to get a little bit up there at 91 pitches. So we'll see if they can do something to maybe get him out of the game. But at this point, he's starting to roll as he's retired seven in a row coming into this inning since the third inning. Yeah, Prairie Stars stranded five base runners in the first three innings. They did score one when they had that brief one nothing lead. Leading off the top of the sixth, the right field. But both starting pitchers for now still in this ball game. Point Loma pitching will be a key for them here in this tournament. They are second in the nation in ERA at 3.16. So their overall staff is really good. Alderman swings and misses 0-1 to Austin Alderman, who is two for two today, two singles and an RBI. Halligan has been throwing some slower breaking balls lately. There's another one swing and a miss, 0-2. He's made the adjustment since they were hitting him pretty hard earlier in the game. I think he's been going to more breaking balls. In both these programs with a record number of wins this year. Each happen to have 48 wins coming into today. Single-digit losses. 0-2 oh, pitch, another breaking ball. 1-2. and two. I think for UIS, you point to the fact that, look, you've basically had the same roster for the last three years. 19 seniors on the roster this year, many of whom used that extra year that the NCAA gave due to COVID. And it has paid off making their first championship week. Constant breaking balls here to Alderman. Two and two the count. He'll be followed by Youngquist and Vanneman. Alderman's been one of the bigger movers in the lineup, moving up into the cleanup spot. That one is hit in the air, deep left field. Malone going back in front of the warning track now, and he hauls it in for out number one. Alderman just got under that one. Eight in a row, retired by Halligan, but he had to hold his breath on that one a little bit. Yeah, not much wind to deal with. Certainly no wind to help you. Now Cal Youngquist, who is one for two, is single, and he is grounded into a double play that ended the first inning. Lefty, lefty, fouled back to the screen. Looks like that hat has been used for a while there for Halligan. <laughs> or did he just do that today? I know these Point Loma players are not used to the high humidity that they'll be getting. Not really so much today, but I think throughout this tournament should be a little more humid than what they're used to in San Diego. Well, when you're only DHing, do you bother to wear a hat? <laughs> Is that just from his 15 appearances? As a pitcher? I guess. Swatted at and missed by Youngquist. That was up and in, and he tried to go yard. One and two. I mean, I don't know. He could have made that cap that dirty just today. They might sell them that way. Yeah. It's going to wind up looking like that. I like it. Let's speed things up. One, two to Youngquist. Curveball fouled back. Remains one and two. 
So that's 100 pitches now for Halligan. I've got 79 degrees, 42% humidity. That's not that bad. That's pretty nice. No, this week is setting up to be pretty kind. Foul ball left side. Youngquist still with a count of one and two. It's Illinois Springfield looking for base runners here. The number seven seed. Down by three. Got that one run in the first inning, and that's been it. They've left five men on base. They left five in the first three innings. One, two to Youngquist. Outside, two and two. Yeah, that one run briefly gave them the lead in the top of the first. Point Loma answered with three, then scored one more in the second. We've been there ever since. Count even at two and two to Youngquist, the senior. 340 batting average coming in. He's got five homers in the postseason. Outfield playing him straight away. They're not playing extremely deep out there. 2-2 two -two to Youngquist. Hit hard up the middle. Base hit as it rolls into right center. Youngquist with a one-out single. His second hit today. Sixth hit for the Prairie Stars. Boy, Jason Demont's just a split second off of snagging that ball for a fantastic out number two. Yeah. Good effort. We have a great line on him, and... He did everything right. His glove was just off a split second. Otherwise, he'd find that one right in the web, be able to throw it over to first. Yeah, he made a nice dive for it. Here's Brant Vanneman, 0 for 1, walked and grounded to short. Curveball ripped foul on the third base side. A very brave coach trying to barehand that ball. <laughs> Four runs, nine hits, no errors for Point Loma. One run, six hits, and no errors for the Illinois Springfield Prairie Stars. There's a called strike, 0-2. In that first game, Rollins made some base running mistakes that were costly, and they lost to Southern Arkansas 3-1. Very well-pitched game. This game had a lot more offense early. The pitchers are starting to throw the ball a lot better. Breaking ball in the dirt, one and two. And I think the story of this game really is just the opportunities that Prairie Stars didn't capitalize on early. And that storyline could be erased if they start to come through in the clutch. This could be a big inning here. For them to show that they're going to make a run. Short lead at first for Youngquist. He is not much of a base dealer, being held over there by Christian. One, two, and Vanneman pops it up foul, out of play on the right side. There's a souvenir. That's a free ice cream sandwich waiting oh. to happen. And there's a nice gesture. I don't think anybody's told that gentleman. <laughs> she doesn't know what to do with it right now. A real now. test of kindness is when people are told there's an ice cream sandwich on the line. What am I supposed to do with this ball? Do I want the ice cream sandwich or do I want the ball? <laughs> She's picking the ball. For now. The one two to Vanneman. Swing and a miss. Strike three. A snap throw over to first, not in time. But Vanneman is out number two. And that's the fourth strikeout for Halligan tonight. Well, it looked like he was fooled. It looked like Vanneman was looking for something else there. The third baseman, Anthony De Here's Anthony DeConcilius. DeConcilius, I should say. 0 for 1 with a walk. He has struck out. Deconcilis, the third baseman. That's in for a strike. That breaking ball has been working pretty well for Halligan in the last few innings. In a follow-up to an earlier story, that young girl no longer has the ball. Oh, did she get the ice cream? That appears to have been <laughs> the transaction made. <laughs> Deconcilis swings and misses, falls behind 0-2. So now Halligan looking for his second straight K to get out of this. Trying to leave another man on base. Likes a sign from Waterman. 0-2 to DeConcilis. Breaking ball again, that misses. 
Neither team has had action in the bullpen. Starters have been able to settle down. Halligan ready to go on one and two. Here it is. High, two and two. Well, give credit to the Prairie Stars hitters. They're making Halligan work. They're really not chasing bad pitches. But he has done a nice job of changing speeds and fooling some of these hitters as far as the speed goes. 2-2. Two -two. Ripped. Base hit. Left field. Coming around second is Youngquist. Holds up there as the throw comes in from Malone. So now you have two on and the tying run coming to the plate in Hunter Phelps. Cal Youngquist does a good job quickly locking eyes with his third base coach. Sees the stop sign, holds up its second. But still, Baxter Halligan just one out away from stranding sixth and seventh runners of the day for the Prairie Stars. With 112 pitches now, they do start to get some action in the bullpen. Pitcher has a baseball now, left-hander. We'll check on him. Phelps at the plate, grounds one towards third base. Kemp up with it, guns him out, and the inning is over. So Phelps on one pitch, 0 for 3 in the game. The Prairie Stars leave two more on. They've left seven. We go to the bottom of the six, 4-1. Point Loma looking for insurance on a three-run lead. Four to one, the Sea Lions leading the Prairie Stars alongside Lincoln Rose. I'm Joe Castellano. Beautiful evening here for game two of this Division II baseball championship. We already saw Southern Arkansas win three to one over Rollins earlier today. And the loser of this game has to play Monday afternoon in a loser bracket game. So you don't want to drop into that. And Point Loma, they've had some chances to add to their lead. Couldn't get it done in the last inning. We'll see if they can do it here with Jack Malone leading off. Yeah, Rollins awaits the loser in the elimination game. Southern Arkansas, a 3-1 to -one winner over Rollins, awaits the winner of this. Bluff to bunt, called strike 0-1 to Malone, who is flying to left and grounded into an inning-ending 4-6-3 double play. We don't recommend losing your first game, but no. it worked out for Wingate last year. The Bulldogs came through the... Elimination bracket all the way. Won the title, fouled back here by Malone, and he has a count of 0-2. They beat Central Missouri last year. Of course, Justin James with that UCSD squad in Grand Prairie almost accomplished the feat. Yeah, that was in 2017 when they it's lost to Westchester. West yeah, in Grand Prairie, Texas. 0-2 to Malone, the number seven hitter. That fastball is high, one and two. Meanwhile, Colton Hale, he's gone all the way for the Prairie Stars. He's given up four runs, nine hits, struck out four. Has not allowed any runs since the second inning. That's when Point Loma was uh, getting to him in those first two innings. But he has been pretty steady since. His pitch count's also getting up there. Fouled back, remains one and two. He's up to 95 pitches now with Halligan over 100. Both bullpens are getting busy, as you saw. It's kind of slowly getting ready. That is Clark Davenport, a right-hander for the Prairie Stars. Malone lines one to left field, but right at Vanneman, and that is out number one. Well positioned out there. Here comes Jason Dumont. Dumont is 0 for 2, fly to center twice. See if, see if Asher Brad has another one sent his way. Or if Jason can reach for the first time. Second base, We've seen pretty good defense so far in this tournament. Seen three double plays in this game. There's a called strike. 
You think about it, with Illinois Springfield, their fielding percentage of 970 is tied for their best in school history. Meanwhile, Point Loma, their defense, 982 fielding percentage, best in the nation. They've made the fewest errors in the nation, 34, and that could bode well in this tournament. If you can play solid defense, that's going to help a lot because we do see mistakes from time to time that are so costly here. Look at all the strings coming out of that glove. Sometimes the umpire will do something about that. 1-1 one, one pitch, check swing, and that's a ball. Or did, the, did he foul that? I think it was just squeezed out of the glove. Yeah, I think that's a ball. They put up a strike up on the board out there. We'll have it addressed here in a moment. Yep, 2-1. Two 2-1 and one. Two and one is your count. Alvarez on deck to follow Dumont. The pitch, ground ball, back to the box, snared by Hale. Nice defensive play by the pitcher. One, three, put out, two down. That's fielding your position right there. Well, there's a chance Colton Hale outlasts his counterpart, Baxton Halligan, in terms of his start. As, again, Halligan's flirting with 120 pitches just about. Yeah, up to ahead of him, I think it was 113. I believe Zach Veen is throwing in the bullpen. That would make sense. Yeah, for Point Loma. We might see him in the next inning. It's one of two really impressive back-end relievers this year for the Sea Lions. Who right now are just trying to find a little more insurance. He is a left-hander. 1-0 is the count to Alvarez, the number nine hitter in the lineup. One for two today, a single and a strikeout. Hale's pitch in the dirt, 2-0. The first inning, the top of the first, Illinois Springfield scored a run, RBI single by Alderman, and then Point Loma scored three in the bottom of the first inning. RBI singles back-to-back -back by Halligan and Ochin. Another run came in on a double play grounder. And the fourth run came in in the second inning. RBI single by Halligan. Foul ball right side. The count two and one to Alvarez. And then the scoring just stopped. And that kid is going hard after that ball. And he's going to break a land speed record. <laughs> That's before the sugar rush of, <laughs> of the ice cream sandwich. <laughs> when you know that's at stake, you're running really hard after that ball. Ground ball, it's softly towards third. Sun setting on a memorable start to this week. Exactly one game in the book so far, but we are right on schedule. Game number two on this opening Saturday. Lincoln Rose, Joe Castellano with you here in Cary, North Carolina. And as anticipated, Baxter Halligan has thrown his final pitch. He'll remain in the ball game as your designated hitter. In his place, Zachary Veen, sophomore out of California. Second team all-conference this year. It's one of a couple of young men that they would trust with a multiple inning save situation. Now, he's probably just hoping for the hold as they do have the All-American Cole Hillier that he would hope to hand this lead off to. But here's what you like out of a, a closer caliber player like Zachary Veen. He struck out 52 batters this year before he ever walked his first hitter. Yeah, and I mean now he sits at 57 Ks and two walks. But yeah, that's quite a streak to go 52 without a walk, 52 strikeouts. 89 to 92 with his fastball, a lot of movement for this left-hander. That first walk came in the final regular season series. A 1.38 ERA, he is 5-0 on the year, not looking for the win here. It is a save situation, he has six of them. We don't anticipate he would go the full three innings. But opposing hitters this year, batting 131. So again, it is Zachary Veen relieving Baxter Halligan. And the average is about two innings per outing. We'll see. 
Number nine hitter, and perhaps a surprise for many. Back at catcher, just in time for carry. Bobby Bernard, 0 for 2 today. A little bit of a tough time with the landing on the mound there for Veen on that first pitch. Again, Bobby's injury was the final series of the regular season. Top of the order, just around the corner for UIS. Bobby with a strikeout and a ground out so far today. UIS has stranded seven now, including two last inning. And that's one of the best things you could say about Halligan's line is those seven left on. He goes six innings, only one run allowed. That looks good. But he did give up seven hits and walked a couple and struck out four. Stands to win. Looking to throw his first strike in relief here, Veen, to the nine hitter. As Bernard has to stay at the plate a little longer. And from a 3-0 count now to a payoff pitch pending. I mean, I think I would have been flat out shocked if he walked him on four pitches, right? After you said about 52 strikeouts before his first walk, that would have to be nerves. It's what we do around here, though. <laughs> Jinx pitchers. So again, 3-2 count. Third walked batter of the entire season. Wow as the announcers come through. It's also a leadoff walk that tends to bode well. With that said, UIS had a leadoff walk back in the second that would wind up being one of their seven stranded. Well, sometimes it just takes a little bit to settle into everything. And yeah, that pitch missed. I mean, it was close. But you're not gonna get that call if you're not throwing strikes right out of the gates. Here is the only Prairie Star to score today. Asher Brad led off the ball game with a single and would ultimately come home in that first inning, only to see the Sea Lions score three in the home half and add a fourth in the second inning. It's been four to one ever since the third inning and moving on. Two and oh. Man, if you didn't look at a stat sheet, you'd never know that he's been a, an impeccable control pitcher, and they're starting to get somebody else loose in the pen. Yeah, you're going to have a chat here. Oh, Justin James, the head coach, he's just going to come out and settle him down. So this isn't specifically to Zachary, but this is just generic conversation. Look, it's a game of averages. If you throw a strike, your opposition is still only – going to get to run the bases maybe a third of the time. Yeah, just let you're, them put the ball in play. You're working with yeah. a three-run lead. Give your defense a chance. Yeah. That's the man he wants to hand the ball off to but doesn't want to have to hand it off to until maybe midway through the eighth inning. Yeah, he's been the closer. That's Cole Hillier you just saw in the bullpen. Again, both Veen and Hillier, each capable of going multiple innings, but you'd rather Hillier not have to go three. But one thing you're not doing is neutralizing left-handed batters because there's only one left-handed batter in the lineup for Illinois Springfield, and that's down at the fifth spot. We're at the leadoff spot right now. Runner on first, Barnard. Bernard, by the way, this year, in case you're wondering, one for two on stolen bases. If this was an even tighter ball game, perhaps they'd consider running for him, knowing they have a capable backup catcher. Brad shows bunt, pulls back. It's a strike on its own merit, three and one. But that's back-to-back -back batters who the first three pitches they see are all out of the strike zone. Yeah, you're putting yourself in a hole, and now you have to come in basically with fastballs down the middle.
UIS down by three. And each time the 3-0 count has progressed to full, the last time it was a leadoff walk. I think if you are a Prairie Stars hitter, you're not really being that patient thinking, oh, he might walk me. I mean, no. you know, he's had a little bit of wildness here, but you're thinking he's going to be throwing me strikes now. Again, this is the top of the order for the Prairie Stars, right where they want to be. And the count remains full. Brandon Bannon is on deck, one for three today. Zion Pettigrew in the hole. And this is a guy with 98 hits this season, third in the nation coming into this tournament in hits. Seventh pitch of this at bat. And it should be the first out of the inning. Christian, one away. Well, it's twilight time, and when you get to a spot where you think the ball's going to be and you look up at the sky, sometimes you'll lose it. But fortunately for Christian, he found that one, one right away. So, again, your base runner there, Bernard. Again, if I, th I think this was a little bit closer, they'd consider running for him. Knowing that Brandon Bannon could shift behind the plate. But Bannon, your shortstop today. Yeah, it might be more of an eighth or ninth inning move instead of seventh inning in the mind of Coach Copeland. This is the meat of the order coming up here. After Bannon, you got Pettigrew and Alderman. Veen has yet to throw a first pitch strike to the three batters he has seen. Yeah. Veen has yet to throw a second pitch strike. I mean, could he have three in a row where he goes three and all? Oh? Maybe you and I didn't do enough research. Runner on first with one out. Now he's going to make it a little bit easier on himself. Two and one. 90 miles an hour on the fastball there by Veen. Bannon singled in the first, was stranded on second. Has twice popped out to the second baseman, Jason Dumont. Count two and two. Just a modest lead over there at first for Bobby Bernard, who led off this inning with a walk. We saw the foul out from Asher Brad. So one on, one out for a team that needs three runs before eight outs are recorded. Only two more outs to work with here in this inning. And it should be a similar fate that we saw. Back-to-back -back foul outs. This time it's Ochin instead of Christian. Two away. And that leadoff batter, Barnard, is still on first base after that leadoff walk. Yeah, and I think that Veen is going to settle into throwing strikes. I think there were a little nerves there. You know, maybe just not being familiar with the mound. The first pitch he threw, he... He kind of slipped on his landing foot. I think he's just going to settle down now. But this is a tough hitter to settle down against. Good things happen when you throw strikes. You will give up some hits. You may give up some runs, but you've been given a three-run advantage. Zion Pettigrew, first pitch he sees, grooves one towards the gap. It'll drop, and it may even score a run. Let's see what they do with Barnard. They're going to slam on the brakes at third, and you've got two men in scoring position after the double from Zion Pettigrew. It's the first time that Veen throws a first pitch strike and Pettigrew was ready. Well, Coach Copeland told us that Zion Pettigrew is a very intelligent hitter. And he saw the 3-0 and counts. He knows he's going to get a first pitch fastball right down the middle. I mean, there's no way Veen is going to fall behind him. So he jumped all over that pitch. Well, Veen is quickly back on the mound, ready here for Austin Alderman. If he can retire Alderman, all of a sudden... He'll be entrusted with a three-run lead, and it will still be a three-run lead heading into the home half. But at the moment, the Prairie Stars threatening with two men in scoring position after the leadoff walk of Bernard and the two-out double from Pettigrew.
And this one launched out towards left, but again, balls just aren't carrying. Jack Malone underneath it. It was a bumpy ride for the first inning for Zachary Veen. But ultimately, what's most important, a zero graces the scoreboard, a three-run lead. And no longer either team with their starting pitcher. As we move on to the bottom half of the seventh, Clark Davenport will relieve Colton Hale. Colton gave up those four runs in the first two innings, but was able to put up four shutout frames after that. For Davenport, his 13th appearance on the year, 11 of which in relief. A 6.35 ERA, opposing hitters batting 247 on the year. Again, we mentioned UIS lost early in the season their ace, Saner. Uh, had a variety of people eat up the innings, including Clark Davenport, a St. Louis native now in his senior campaign. Well, when you look at the outing for Hale, I think early on it was rough for him. He was giving up a lot of hits, but he really recovered pretty well. Didn't give up any runs since the second inning. Got some more strikeouts and finished his outing strong as he retired his last six batter. So that's a good way to end that. He kept his team in the game. you got to give him credit for that. It's going to be the top of the order for the Sea Lions, who saw Colton Hale three times. Now to see Davenport for the first time. Here's Otto Kemp. He has singled, has been hit by pitch, and struck out looking. First time to come to the plate since back in the fourth inning. Sea Lions have stranded five tonight. Well, Prairie Stars are up to nine runners left after stranding two last half inning. So Kemp, Anderson, and Halligan do up. They already have five hits. Five of eight collectively for your top third of the order. They've scored all four of the runs. It's an interesting choice to go with Davenport because his ERA is not one of the better earn run averages as far as the relievers are concerned. And it's not to say that they are conceding this game, but they kind of want to save their bullpen a little bit for a future game in case they don't come back in this one. That might be why you're seeing them here. I mean, we just saw two brilliant starts in our first game that really was a luxury, and we happen to see it for both teams in that game. For Rollins, unfortunately, they didn't get a win out of it. Kemp down on strikes for a second time. As a much cleaner start for Clark Davenport in relief than his counterpart Veen a moment ago. Well, that was 94 miles an hour on the gun, so if he's going to throw that kind of heat, uh, he's going to be tough to catch up to. Here's Scott Anderson, two singles and a fly out today. That was another 94 mile per hour offering. Yeah, he's throwing harder than the starter Hale was. One and one. Lost the bat. I don't think you get an ice cream sandwich if you catch one of those. Well, that's why it's a good thing that they have the screen in front of the dugout and then in front of the stands because when a bat goes flying like that, yeah. it could be dangerous. That's a projectile. That thing's flying at good velocity. We've seen chivalry really tested over the years in baseball ballparks. The one, two. That was high, but tempting at eye level at that speed. Though just 81 miles per hour. You know, Davenport, he was probably chomping at the bit to get out there because he has not pitched since May the 14th. So he has not been pitching in the postseason. And here he is, weeks after his last appearance. Again, the one-two. That'll get through the left side. Third base hit on the night for Scott Anderson. He's three for four. 
That's 10 hits now for Point Loma. Their offense has been solid. But they haven't driven in as many runs as they would like. They've had chances you know, since the second inning, but they just have not been able to plate any more runs. Well, it wasn't completely true when I said neither starting pitcher is still around. More on that in a moment. As Scott Anderson, again, third hit, has scored once today. We'll try to touch home for a second time. Here is your starting pitcher, your DH still in the ball game, Baxter Halligan. Seventy nine miles per hour, tight for ball one. Halligan, three singles, two runs batted in so far, and a run scored. And 113 pitches. Runner on first, Anderson with one out. That one fisted over to the shortstop, Bannon. And Halligan retired for the first time, two away. Now batting the right fielder, Hunter Ochen. More entertainment. Here's a guy we haven't talked about today. <laughs> Hunter Ochen singled back in the first inning. Sack bunt more recently in the fifth. It's funny, as active as he is in between pitches, he's not that active when he's standing in the box. Other than the bat, where he's moving that intently back and forth, but the rest of his body is so still once he's settled in the box. In between, a lot of animation. Anderson hoping a chance, hoping for a chance to advance off of first. Ochin holds back. Ooh. The appeal did not go. That was close. And generally, the guys who don't wear batting gloves like to get some dirt on their hands, but he does it almost every pitch where he wants to get a ton of dirt on his hands. We've had camera operators who wear more batting gloves than Ochin. <laughs> we miss you, Tut. <laughs> Big cut, 2-1. and one. Our guy Brian Tuttle for years operated that camera out there in center field that would give you a look at every single pitch thrown. Seems like for the past decade here. Yeah, I heard he might be retired. He is back in Minnesota enjoying some family time. For now. <laughs> and runner on first with two outs. Ochi in your cleanup hitter. Looking for insurance. Three and one. I get nervous just looking at Ochi. I mean, look, it's just hard to relax watching him. I mean, as a pitcher, I would think it'd be hard to relax looking at him. You don't find his rhythm soothing? No, I, I just get nervous. The predictability of it all, the calming. The 3-1. Full count coming up. Again, Clark Davenport, first inning of relief. Both teams have gone to their bullpen. There have been some bumps for both along the way. This guy's like a storm cloud that's just hovering over, and at some point he's just going to unleash his fury. He is the only storm cloud in carry this week, we're told. So far. Why did I bring that up? Two outs, run on first, we'll be moving. Payoff pitch to Ochin. Shallow right, backtracking, able to make the catch. Pettigrew over the shoulder, no problem. Four sea lions come to the plate. They'll strand one, and it remains a three-run ball game, still within striking distance for the Prairie. The starting pitcher Colton Hale back in the dugout. He saw for the first time uh, an inning as a spectator as Clark Davenport came in, pitched a shutout inning to keep it just a three-run deficit. Let's see if the Prairie Stars can finally take advantage. They have not scored since the first run of the ball game back in the first inning. 
Since then, it has been seven straight zeros on the scoreboard here at Coleman Field. Lincoln Rose, Joe Castellano with you. Zachary Veen back for his second inning in relief of starter Baxter Halligan for the Sea Lions. One of these two teams is going to find a program record 49th victory. Already enjoying a program record 48 wins apiece. Point Loma 48 and 8. UIS 48 and 9. Of those nine losses for UIS, four of them this year were to Quincy, a team they finally got the better of when it mattered the most in the postseason. So being the lefty will face Cal Youngquist to get things started here. Youngquist last year an All-American DH. Picked up a glove this season. It's been your first baseman. It'll be Youngquist, Vanneman, and DeConcelis. The minimum three due up for Veen. Working with a three-run lead, Youngquist, two singles, and his hit into a double play. It's his first time to lead off an inning today. See if he can set the table for a comeback with six outs, basically, to work with. Well, the Prairie Stars have only had one game where they scored fewer than three runs, and that was back on February the 12th. Just past the glove of Veen, that might be a good thing. Anderson over to first. How often do we see a pitcher who's just too athletic for their own good they get a fingertip of the glove on the ball, and it prevents anybody up the middle from having a chance. Not that time. One away. He knows that he can count on his infielders. I mean, I mentioned earlier how steady they are defensively, and nice job by Anderson to charge that. He had to charge it quickly to be able to make that play. Not an easy out, keeping Youngquist off the base paths. Here's Brant Vanneman. He has walked, grounded out, and struck out so far today. It was a leadoff walk back in the second inning. Now you're starting to see some first pitch strikes from Veen, which we did not see when he first came in last inning. Veen came in to start the seventh. First two batters he faced began with 3 0 counts, only to work them full. Off to a better start here in the eighth. Mentioned the likely goal is to hand it off to Cole Hillier next inning. The 1-1. As Vanneman now behind on the count after fouling that one off. You mentioned lower scoring than usual. Southern Arkansas this postseason had not scored fewer than seven, but they happily won today with three runs, all of which came on a single swing of the bat. Yeah. Connor Allen, the three-run homer, and that was it, it was as a far as offense. Three-one final. Yep. This one poked through. And let's see if the comeback begins now for the Prairie Stars. Vanneman shoots one into right. His first hit on the day. Well, they've had something going just about every inning. There were a couple of one, two, three innings in the middle there in the fourth and the fifth innings, but they've left nine men on base the Prairie Stars have. They're looking for a couple of clutch hits, and I think we're going to get a pitching change. It will, in fact, be Cole Hillier when you rejoin us, the first team All-American looking to close this one out. Point Loma is still five outs away from advancing to the winner's bracket. Cole Hillier, first team All-American. The sophomore makes his 23rd appearance on the year. 15 saves for the program and conference record this year, and he's hoping to make it 16 by the end of the day. This is a save situation, a three-run lead. In addition, inherits a base runner on first with one out here in the eighth inning. 
Hillier has increased his velocity as he's gone along in his career. His fastball is up to 94 now, usually, and he throws a changeup and a slider. A 2.37 ERA, opposing hitters batting 194. That's about a little over a strikeout and a half per inning. Sophomore from Glendora, California, near Los Angeles. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> well, right now it's the bottom third of the order that needs to produce. UIS looking for its first run since the first inning. And our impressive producer reminds us that of the three pitchers we've seen in this ball game, all of them allowed the first batter they faced to reach. In fact, both starting pitchers allowed that man to score. We will see if Cole Hillier can put it into that run. And I said three pitchers, four pitchers, and it ends now, Pat. As two away. Well, you just want your relief pitcher to come in throwing strikes. We didn't see that initially from Veen, but he recovered. And now Hillier is a guy that has the experience, as you mentioned, closing games, the 15 saves. Pat blames Thomas for that note. <laughs> Here's Hunter Phelps, your DH. 0 for 3 today out of the 8 spot. Couple of pop outs and a ground out. Vanneman had the one out single. He's still on first. UIS has struggled to move runners several times in this ball game. Had runners early before an out was recorded. Easton Waterman says, if this dirt's good enough for Hunter Ochen, I'm going to have me some. <laughs> the 0-2. They're more than comfortable with Hillier going multiple innings. Now there is a time when it looked like he was going to have to come on in the seventh. Bean was able to settle in. With two outs, lined in the glove of Christian, and any threat is over. The Prairie Stars are down to three outs, but first, they need to keep the Sea Lions in the home half of the eighth from expanding on a three-run lead. Phelps, straight to the glove of Christian. That's your... Well, it's hard to complain about anything today. We've got baseball. We've got a scenic ballpark as always here in Cary, North Carolina. Great weather, even at the peak of the afternoon. Yeah. Wanted to get out for a little walk around the ballpark. I wouldn't do that to you, though. <laughs> so Clark Davenport, second inning of relief. Here's Jacob Christian, who just caught that line out and just had another laser shot at him, but this time... He gets to run. Well, that one won't hurt too much since it was a breaking ball. Easy for me to say. He's still got a hit by a baseball. Now batting the catcher, Easton Waterman. Yeah, grazed him. And Easton Waterman now comes to the plate. One for three today. Had an RBI single in the first. That scored Anderson and Halligan. And a timeout called. With a little grin on the face as 
Christian comes over and everybody's getting on the same page. Yeah, they might play for a run here, try to bunt the runner over, try to play for one run because that could be a very important insurance run. You know, I'm told the N95 masks are the best to prevent the uh, mouth reading. It, <laughs> they only let about 5% of your plans leak out. <laughs> what about the surgical mask? There is going to be a pinch hitter, I believe. Nope. Still Waterman. Saw a gesture. Simply a timeout. Well, the N95 is sort of a surgical mask, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, it won't do the surgery for you. <laughs> only if you stay at a Holiday Inn. Again, Christian, your runner on first after being hit by a pitch. Waterman at the plate. I assume the instructions were score runs. We'll wait and see. Four runs on ten hits for the Sea Lions. Their first three hits led to runs. Let's see if they can find more. Two O to Waterman. Too tight. Three and zero. In Davenport, second inning in relief, faced four batters in the seventh. Stranding one. A hit batter and a walk. Two free passes. Now they got more action in their bullpen, so Davenport may not be long for this game. He's got to start throwing strikes. If you don't come back today, you would like to have as many arms available for a tough journey back as the candidate is Eddie Wilkins, the six foot four right hander. Already has 11 relief appearances this year. Let's see if they're just buying him more time. They are. So again, we'll step aside. Sea Lions already a three-run lead, threatening to score their first run since back in the A note to pitchers, if you're going to wear the number 52, this is the expectation. As a six foot four right hander and Eddie Wilkins, again, his 13th appearance on the year, all but one in relief. Opposing hitters batting just 208. As I mentioned all those appearances, most of them have been about an inning. As his 13 appearances so far have led to 14 and two thirds innings of work, 16 strikeouts. His job right now is to find three outs before either of the two runs score. They want to give themselves a chance in the top of the ninth of a comeback down by just three. And again, it's not one of the top relievers for UIS, but I understand the strategy here for Coach Copeland. It's not that he's given up on this game, but he is trailing, and he knows that if he can get a lead in the next game, he's going to want to use his best relievers and try to continue to win. But, you know, it is a tough proposition when you get into that loser's bracket, although Wingate did it last year, as we've mentioned, and won it all. Before Wingate did it last year, we used to talk about how nobody was going to be able to do it. <laughs> it just is not a likely path unless you have that magical combination of arms. Yeah. And a few things go your way. And you can ask Coach Justin James from his time at UCSD when he had three great pitchers and it still couldn't be done on the final day. Jack Malone in the bottom third of the order facing Eddie Wilkins with two on and nobody out. 
Malone 0 for 3 today. A couple of flyouts to right and a inning ending double play. That is Jacob Christian sneaking into your screen on second after being hit by a pitch. Well placed bunt, only plays it first, and that's why you put the bunt down. Now a play at the plate. Throw is off the line. Sea Lions score for the first time since the second inning. And you need to understand, when a coach asks you to bunt, he's not asking you just to give yourself up. You force the defense in a tense situation to execute, and this time the Prairie Stars cannot. Well, a sacrifice, an error on the pitcher, Wilkins. Terrible throw there, another bad throw to the plate. They're just throwing the ball all over the yard here. But, yeah, just a simple bunt play. And he just never set his feet correctly to make that throw. And another bad throw, I believe that was a second baseman, Pettigrew, yeah. backing it up and made that bad throw. There probably could have been an out to be made at home. Just throw was a bit hurried. Just one error, and it's on the pitcher. That was the first ball batted into play this inning after a couple of free passes. And a hit batter, Jason DeMont, bases loaded. Wow, hit batsman walk, pitching change, sack bunt error, hit batsman. It's not going well for the Prairie Stars here in the eighth. Waterman on third, Malone with the sack bunt on second, Dumont on first, here's your nine hitter, Isaiah Alvarez. And I take it back, they did give an error to Pettigrew, the second baseman, that allowed the runner to go to third. Yeah. Alvarez today, one for three with a stolen base. That's now Malone sneaking into your picture. He's the one who squared around a bunt to create the chaos. A tight offering to Alvarez. Wilkins seems to be rattled. I mean, he's all over the place with his pitches. He made that bad throw to first, so it really has not gone well. You can't see it, but the priority clearly is at the plate. Even though there could be a double play to be had, everybody is up in on the infield grass. Ball slips away, but not far enough. As again, Bobby Bernard back at catcher as of tonight. Able to keep it within reach. Well, the last time that Wilkins pitched was against Quincy in the Super Regional, and he gave up seven runs, but only two of them earned in two and a third innings. So there was poor defense in that outing, too. He gave up six hits in two and a third innings. Sea Lions have already added a run to their lead. We had been stuck on a 4-1 to score line since back in the second. We were going to put the scoreboard operator on milk cartons. <laughs> There's nowhere to put him here down in the count 3-0, and too. They do have more action in the bullpen. Base is loaded. Nobody out. Your number nine hitter, Alvarez. 3-1. and one. Dumont hit by a pitch to load the bases. Malone on second. Waterman right now 90 feet away from adding another insurance run. Again, all the infield is up on the grass. That is a bases loaded walk. An RBI walk to set the merry-go-round in motion another 90 feet. Two runs have scored this inning. Only one ball has been put into play. And both of those runs go on the record of Davenport and that's going to do it for Wilkins. He faces three. A bunt, a hit batter, and a walk. We'll introduce you to the newest Prairie Star to take the mound. We Fifth year Seton, Luke Fitton comes on as your fourth pitcher for the Prairie Stars. He's going to be facing the top of the order for Point Loma. The Sea Lions have already scored twice this inning. We've mentioned it going into break. Five batters have come to the plate. Only one has put a ball into play. Two hit batters, two walk batters, including an RBI walk a moment ago from Isaiah Alvarez, the nine hitter. The only ball put into play, a sack bunt from Jack Malone that seemed to just unravel 
the Prairie Stars. Yeah, two errors made on that play by the pitcher Wilkins and the second baseman Pettigrew. So it really looks like it's been coming apart at the seams in this inning for the Prairie Stars. Here's Otto Kemp, has singled, been hit by a pitch, scored twice, but has struck out his last two at-bats. That ball, just about any other inning would have a runner coming home. Yeah, with nobody out, you don't want to take that chance, but yeah, I think you're right. That could have been a good chance to score. Who is going to get that ball, and who's going to feel the throw to home? Right. But with nobody out, I, I don't think you take any yeah. chances. You're well, I, 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 I don't think that. that's going to cost him the ball game. No. Hey, you're <laughs> up five. Base is loaded. Nobody out here in the eighth. Otto Kemp at the plate. Top of the order. Infield is still playing in. So one out is more important to them than possible double play ball. Fitton's throwing 93 with his fastball. 15th appearance, all in relief for Luke. 4.26 ERA, 2 and 1 count now. Opposing hitters batting 233. Through those 14 appearances, 19 innings of work, 20 strikeouts. Mentioned earlier that the Prairie Stars are 28 and 3 since April the 1st coming into this game. So, I mean, they're just not used to losing at all lately. Shot up the middle, it gets through. Two more runners will come home for Point Loma. That is just the second ball this inning put into play. It's a two-run base hit for Otto Kemp that scores both Malone and Dumont. Now they're just pouring it on here. Kemp is a tough out to begin with. Just hits it back up the middle. He knows the infield's in, hits it hard. Two more runs. I was mentioning the Prairie Stars being a team that had been playing so well lately. And throughout the year, they have three win streaks of 10-plus games, including a season-high 16-game winning streak. They just haven't experienced many games like this this season. Point Loma has matched their seven-inning total of four runs with four more runs here in the eighth. And still no outs. Here's Scott Anderson, three for four today. They've got as many runs in this inning as we saw in total in yep. that first game today. Only third base unoccupied right now. And now at least that infield can go back to standard depth. Not concerned about a play at the plate. Six straight batters have reached to start the inning against three different pitchers. Only one of those batters actually swung at a baseball and put it into play. Yeah. And it paid off. Two more runs. 0-2 pitch to Anderson. Runners going. Ooh. And Anderson trying to protect them. Frankly, it was a good enough jump. Probably could have had a double steal there, but if that had been called strike three, he may have regretted it. Yeah. You wonder about baseball codes, right? <laughs> I mean, running with a seven-run lead, nobody out, but sometimes you just keep playing your game, I guess. I mean, some, most of the time the baseball codes are silly anyway. Scott Anderson, the seventh batter of this inning. Count stays at 0-2 with two on. They were moving a moment ago. They are again. Strike them out. Throw them out. Two outs. Otto Kemp moves into second. But all of a sudden, two outs here in the eighth. I'm not really not sure why you're running there. Yeah, putting more pressure on the defense. But, I mean, he was out by a mile at third base. Barnard just gunning him down. That was an easy play at third. Yeah, pretty modest lead over at second. Kind of swiped the ball there at the end, it looked like. Eighth batter this inning, Baxter Halligan, your starting pitcher. Still in the DH role. Second time he's come up today since being relieved on the mound. Lined out to the shortstop last time. He is three for four today with 
two RBI and a run scored. And he's trying to give Joe another chance to talk about Hunter Ochen, who's on deck. A four-run bottom of the eighth. Again, Cole Hillier's already in the game, so it will still be a save situation for him. When he comes back out in the ninth on the mound. Count one and two. Third batter that Luke fit in his face, a single and a strikeout to show for it, plus the runner caught stealing. Just needs one more out to get his Prairie Stars back to the plate. Halligan able to lay off that one. Well, you want to get as many runs as you can here because you know the Prairie Stars are capable of amazing things on offense. They haven't shown it in this game, but they're capable of it. They put up 10 runs in their two victories against Quincy in the Super Regional. And that's why I had runners running in this situation. Able to get Halligan chasing, so eight runner batters come to the plate for Point Loma, four of whom score. They have increased their lead for Cole Hillier who will try to slam the door shut in the top of the ninth. Prairie Stars have three outs for a comeback. And what was a hill of a task grew to a mountain last half inning. They had been trailing almost the entire ball game by a four to one score line. That lead for the opposition, the Sea Lions, has grown to seven, who put up a four spot in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 46, Noah Crow. Going to see a pinch hitter here. Yeah, Noah Crow, the Springfield native, the fourth year junior, batting 281 on the year. This is his 37th appearance this season. So Noah Crow will bat for Bobby Bernard in the nine spot. Left side, Anderson. And that comeback window has been trimmed to two outs. One away. At the moment, it would be Rollins on Monday facing UIS in the first elimination game of the week. One of those teams would be picking up, though, their first victory here in Cary. And it would be UIS set to meet Southern Arkansas. Anderson, Christian, two away. A flag will drop after that game on Monday afternoon. One team will go home. As Asher Brad quickly retired, gives way to Brandon Bannon. A young man who was asked to catch much of this postseason, played shortstop today, singled back in the first inning. One for four in his carry debut, facing Cole Hillier who's an out away from picking up a save. Inherited a three-run lead that, at no fault of his own, ballooned to a seven-run lead. And the baseball statisticians do not hold that against him. Hillier looking for his program and conference record 16th save on the year. Uh, it's not going to happen yet. A two-out base hit from Brandon Bannon. Trying to save this one for Halligan, who would go to 13-2 and two on the season. And it wasn't his best outing, especially early on. But give him a lot of credit because he might not have had his best stuff, but he made an adjustment in the middle of the game and started to cruise a little bit and finished pretty strong with his six innings. Threw a lot of pitches, though, 113. Here's Zion Pettigrew. I don't think we picked either starting pitcher to last as long as they did after we saw the first couple of innings. Yeah. 
Because even as low scoring as it was, there were a lot of base runners getting on, a lot of pitches being thrown. Pettigrew finally broke through with that double in the seventh, only to be left on base. And now down to perhaps the final strike. Prairie Stars held a 1-0 lead going into the bottom of the first. Since then, eight unanswered by Point Loma. As he watches the 0-2 off the mark. Double header tomorrow. Southern New Hampshire and Angelo State at 1.30 Eastern, 6 o'clock Eastern, North Greenville and Westchester. Two returnees from last year and a former national champion in the mix. The one-two as Pettigrew keeps this ball game going, just as Bannon did a moment ago when he singled. Hillier, the third pitcher used today for Point Loma. Zachary Veen went a little over an inning in relief of Halligan. Handing over the three-run lead to Hillier. Ball game. A team that won 11 games all of last year is off to a 1-0 and start and a program record 49th victory here in 2022. They will face Southern Arkansas on Monday in our first winner's bracket contest, while UIS will have a date with the Tars of Rollins in our first elimination game of the week. And it's just a game where Illinois Springfield had so many chances early on. They left 11 men on base. They're going to lament that fact, and they're going to have to play a lot better in the clutch with their hitting the rest of the way. For Point Loma, you mentioned this matchup with Southern Arkansas on Monday. The winner of that game is going to have two days off, which is always a big advantage here in this tournament. So we'll see how that goes. Point Loma certainly has their pitching lined up and did a really good job in this game, especially of padding the runs there late in the ball game. For the Prairie Stars, take note, last year's national champion lost its first game and never lost again. That path is available. Though it will be an uphill battle. Sea Lions come through with the win tonight. For Joe Castellano and our entire NCAA.com crew, two games down. We're going to do it again tomorrow. Another doubleheader coming your way. 1.30 Eastern time is when we return here to Cary, North Carolina.